Hi everyone, this is Adam Virgil, and in this video we're going to learn how to control our charts with date selectors. We're going to do it in two ways. We're going to do it once using a chart with data over time and contain that chart to just the date range that we select. And we're also going to do it with something where we're aggregating data. So maybe we're taking a sum of information or an average of information and controlling dates to control what dates those averages or sums are over. I hope that makes sense. And let's get started. So you'll see that I already have an area set up on the right hand side. And there's an athlete that we're going to pick. And there's a start date and an end date that we're also going to pick. I created a drop down menu of athletes here. And I have videos on data validation where and how to create drop down menus. You could check those out if you need assistance there. On the left hand side, we have our data. What we have is we have dates, an athlete's name, their rating of fatigue, and their training load. These are just arbitrary numbers. They could be any metrics that you have. And as we scroll through, we have an athlete over many, many dates. And then eventually we'll get to another athlete over many, many dates. And we have a couple athletes like that. So we're collecting daily information on these athletes. Now, the first thing that we're going to want to do to create a chart where we can control the dates is we're going to need to get the data for the date range of that chart. To do that, we're going to use a function called filter. So equals filter, open parenthesis. And what filter does is it essentially puts a filter on a table. So if you're used to Microsoft Excel or even just filtering tables, it's essentially that where we say, okay, we want stuff from a table, but limit it to this stuff or certain pieces of information. So the first thing that we need is a range. What do we want to bring back here? Now, the data that we bring back here will depend on how you want your dashboard or whatever it is to operate. But to make things simple, let's say that we want all of this data back. So we want column A all the way through column D back return back to us but we don't want all of it we want it comma when condition one is true and condition one is when the athlete is equal to the athlete that we select say when the athlete or column b is equal to whatever is in this box and we will close the parenthesis and click enter we get nothing for now but if we choose Laquan James, now we have all of the data for this athlete. Notice on 9 1 2020, there's the fatigue and the training load values, 3 and 8. Now, this is okay so far. Now, hopefully, we can see that we need some other criteria. So, not only do we want the data for this athlete that we pick, we also want the data within the two dates that we select. Now to do that, we can add some more criteria here. We can say also when, because filter allows for multiple conditions, blue comma, condition two. Now also when the date in our database is greater than or equal to this date that we select. And let's close off the parentheses and click enter. And we notice that nothing changes. But what happens if we select a date that is past 9-1-2020? So let's try 10-1-2020 and click Enter. Now, all the data that we have is past this date. That's great. That's a good start. We need one more condition. And that other condition is, you probably could have guessed it, is comma. We also want to know when the date in our database is less than or equal to the end date that we select. And we can close that off and click enter. And now we have an error. The reason why this error is here is because there is no end date. If we type in an end date, and the way that I typically do this is I might have a set end date. It might be equals today which just brings in today's date. And if I click enter, now we have an end date. But we could also make this end date 10-15-2020. Um, Let's try that, 10-15-2020 and click enter. 
And now this is all the data that's brought back, the data between these two dates that we picked, which is great because that's all we need to do. Now, if we create a chart, then it will be based off of these dates. So let's create a chart now. And to create a chart, it's relatively simple. However, what we'll do first is I'm going to put headers in here. I'll say this is this is our, our date. Um, I don't care about the athlete's name. And this is fatigue. And this is training load. Now, I'm going to select all the data that goes inside of our chart. Insert chart. And there we have it. We have our chart. What we will notice is that the athlete's name is repeated every time. And the way that we can remove that is by seeing that this x axis, which is our dates, has a label, which is G6 to G21. G6 to G21, column G here, are the athlete's names. So we can remove that label to get rid of it. And I'll just edit the chart again and click on the X by the label. And there we have our chart. And I'll click on the X of this chart editor now. And I'll move it over here. Now this chart should be controlled by these dates. So if we select, uh, let's say, 11-15-2020 and click Enter, nothing happened. Now why is that? Let's take a look. So if we move this chart over, notice that we do have our data here, but what we did in the chart setup, and I see this frequently, is that we didn't accommodate for extra values. So what we might want to do is when we choose our chart series, we we'll go to edit chart, I'll move my face so that you can see what's going on here, where this says date, I'm going to click on it and click on these selected data range icon. Instead of F6 to F21, we, we might want F6 to F, F1000 uh, to accommodate for more data points. And click OK. And we might want to do the same thing for fatigue and training load so that they accommodate for future data points if we manipulate date ranges. So we'll click on fatigue, select a data range. Instead of H21, we'll make it H1000. One important thing to do with these charts is to make sure that whatever this range is, is that they're the same for each of the series and the x-axis, or else things will be misaligned. So we'll click OK. And now for our training load series, we'll edit selected data range. Instead of I6 to I21, we'll do I6 to I1000, and click OK. And now here's our chart. It may not look the, the way that we want it to, and maybe we can edit it and make, a, make it a combo chart. So that one of them is a bar, one of them is a line. Or we don't have to have both of these things in the same chart. But now, what we should be able to do is control these dates. So let's say now we want to look at it from 10-1 to 12-15-2020. Click Enter. Now we have more data there. And we should be able to adjust the start date. Maybe it's 11-15-2020 to 12-15-2020. Now, if you always wanted to see, because I see this sometimes, if you always wanted to see the past seven days, let's say, of data, you could set the end date to today, or a better strategy, we'll go through both, because this is important. This is a really cool thing, or interesting thing with dates. So if I go equals today, and click enter, it goes all the way to this date, 1-21-2021. And if I have my start date be equal, be equal to today minus 7, which would be the past 7 days, and I click Enter, there's no data in this chart. And this would be an automatic way of always seeing the past 7 days. If you collect data every day, and you collected data today. But in reality, this isn't always the case, and you might want to see the past 7 days relative to the maximum date in the data set. And the way that we can do that is instead of this cell, this end date being equal to today, we can use a formula called max ifs to get the latest date for the athlete that we select in our data set, which would give us the data for the data for the past seven days for the athlete. So instead of equals today, we'll have this cell be equals max 
ifs, open parenthesis, and what we're doing is we're looking for a maximum value. I'm going to move my face again. So we want the maximum date. So for the range, we want the date. So we want the maximum date, comma, and now just like filter, we have conditions. So we want the maximum date when, criteria range one, when the athlete, comma, and now we have criterion one. Well, when the athlete is what? When the athlete is equal to this athlete that we select. And let's close the parenthesis and click enter. And now this date will always be the maximum date for the athlete that we select. And this date will always be uh, the athlete's maximum date minus seven days, or however many days you want. Now let's say that you didn't know how many days that you wanted. Let's say, you know, you might want the past 14, the past 21, it kind of depends. Then instead of having this cell be minus seven, we could just have this cell be minus, and I'm just going to pick a cell. Let's say this cell right here, J2, and click Enter. Right now there's nothing in J2, but let's make this a yellow box and type in a number. Let's say 14, and click Enter. Now we are seeing the past 14 days for this athlete, and we could see the past 3 days or the past 21 days. It doesn't really matter. You have control over it. And one nice thing about these dates is maybe in general you want to see this information, but you can always overwrite this. So if I didn't want this formula to exist anymore, this maximum date formula, I could change it back to maybe 12, 15, 20, 20, and it's fine. And we'll see the past 20 days, 21 days from that date. I'll undo that. And just to test whether this max date is working, if we go to Laquan James, and we look for his, his or her maximum date, and it's 1, 2, 20, 21, what happens if we remove all of these all the way through 12, 27? And let's scroll back up to the top. Now the maximum date is 1227 for this athlete. And if we select a different one, it goes back to 1221 because we didn't remove any of their data. In the next video, we're going to talk about aggregating data by this date range, and we might use a different formula to do that. And what we'll also do is we'll go through the intricacies of doing what we did in this way because there are pros and there are cons to it, and we'll go over different strategies for if you want your dashboard or whatever your interactions are to operate in a different way. And then in, I think we'll do one more video where we, where we make what we've built into a dashboard so that you have something concrete at the end of this thing that you could use. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.